So good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our Netgear Insider webinar today on the topic of file services and collaboration with NAS systems from Netgear. My name is Josa Brown. I am the Worldwide Product Marketing Manager for our storage solutions here at, Net at Netgear. First of all, welcome. Again, thanks to everyone in the meeting for your uh, time and interest in our webinar today. Uh, as already said, well, for those of you who are in, you hear me, of course, um, dial in or use the computer audio. We are recording the meeting, and you will also receive the, file, the slide where after um, the webinar, so there is no need to take extensive notes. Uh, the recording will be placed on the partner web and also sent to you as a link after the webinar. If you have any questions, uh, as I'm alone today in the webinar, um, please, I would ask for your patience. I'm more than happy to answer questions after the webinar. Uh, we can use our chat functionality for this. Uh, it's a bit difficult to answer questions while presenting, so please bear with me and uh, thanks for your patience on any upcoming questions you may have. Uh, what do we want to talk about today? I really, really will try to keep it brief. Uh, 45 minutes is the plan here. We want to have a little bit of a look at file services as such and collaboration. What is the use case here? Um, what are the specifics when it comes to using ready NAS and ready data solutions from um, Netgear for file services? And then we want to look at another aspect of using NAS for file storage, which is collaboration, working together on uh, storage or on a NAS from remote locations across multiple offices and PCs, how can we remotely manage those NAS devices? And then uh, a new buzzword has arrived for those of you who haven't heard about it. It's called shadow IT. What does it mean? This is by basically uh, the usage of Dropbox, of Google Drive, of other cloud instances by uh, employees of a company. Uh, but as the nature of Dropbox or Google Drive um, is external, this is uh, IT functionality that is used by employees without control of the IT administration, which causes some problems in many com uh, companies. We can discuss this uh, and are there workarounds for that. Good. Uh, just to set the stage a little bit in terms of what does a, the use case using NAS as a fast server look like? Um, what is the topology, so to say, and what are some of the, the, the aspects when you use ready NAS or ready data for um, file services? First of all, you have um, users working and storing files, working on files and storing them directly on the NAS in, well, the setup of a mapped network drive. You see that little Windows Explorer uh, screenshot here. So I think everybody knows that. You, you install them uh, or your mapped network drives at your customers on a daily basis, of course, or they map network drives for their users to access them within the local area network. And then, of course, the interesting bit comes when we talk about protecting those data. Uh, they need to be protected as much as you have to protect data on any PC. Uh, or, or any other data storing device. And there's basically two levels of protection. One is uh, you need to protect the data against anything that can happen on a local level. So in the actual office where you have that NAS as a file server installed, uh, what can happen here? Accidental deletion of files, people messing up things, uh, maybe even IT messes up something. We have uh, still, even though the network attached storage system is protected by firewall, by your firewall and, and all the, the other security um, precautions you have taken, uh, you can still have malware and viruses direct, directly on the NAS. How can this happen? Well, uh, often we have folks bringing uh, probably with the best intention, music files, uh, videos, any other uh, stuff they want to share with colleagues in the office, they load it directly from the USB drive to the NAS. I don't want to talk about people who use BitTorrent or so and, and download uh, files directly from the internet to the NAS. But again, uh, with those two examples, it's clear that it is at least a big advantage if you have some uh, something running on the NAS or on your file server that takes care of malware and viruses as well. Uh, and the third one that can happen, and this is not so well known, um, 
within the IT communities. Uh, a third thing that can happen to your data on the local NAS is silent data corruption, or also known as bitrot. What does that basically mean? Well, uh, there is still the, the, the perception out there sometimes that once you store data on, on magnetic media or even SSDs, it's safe there. It's not. You have uh, on the very low level, on the bit level, you have uh, deterioration of your data. It's most visible in JPEGs, funny enough. So uh, uh, probably everyone has seen a JPEG with some funny, very bright pixels in there, or even half the JPEG just disappearing. This is a typical, very visible example of that phenomenon called bit rot. <clears throat> it's, of course, even more annoying when this, uh, this uh, appears in, in databases or, or large office files. So if there's technologies that help with that, are they available now in small, medium business um, circumstances? We will see that later. Netgear is the first company that has a uh, embedded functionality that helps against this funny phenomenon. Uh, and then there's the second layer, of course, which is protection against loss of an entire site because of burglary, because of a fire, a flood, uh, or as simple things as a water pipe breaking, um, or of course uh, failure of of uh, uh, chassis, which can always happen. So you always have to have a second copy of data of your NAS somewhere else. Uh, of course, the most elegant technology is replication. We will have a look how that works with Netgear Replicate. There are other solutions out there. Many customers still use tape, uh, connect USB drives, use the cloud. This is all ways to handle that uh, or, or take precaution against that threat. Uh, important is you to have a second copy uh, of the data. Before I continue, I'm, I want to try out that little, um, that little opinion poll. It's the first time I try this with our uh, conference system, so I hope uh, it works. I would just encourage everyone to go in there. You're doing this already and uh, answer the, the um, questions here. And then we can see what uh, the results are. I actually like that because you can uh, live see what, what the results are of that opinion poll. So we can clearly see, still counting, we can clearly see that uh, yeah, obviously, uh, still the majority only use, uh, or not the majority, but uh, solid 40%. We have now 44% uh, half. Maybe we could say use Windows servers, uh, a third use NAS, and another third uh, use both options for um, file sharing today. Quite interesting um, result, in my opinion. So it's always good to see what all the colleagues do um, in, in, a, in a given um, set. I think we are getting close. So 60% NAS or Windows servers. And then uh, it's still changing. I think the final result is something like 30% each. OK, thanks very much for participating here going forward. Um, it definitely seems that there is a big room for NAS as file servers. And I just want to dive in a little bit more in here. So what is the file sharing use case? Basically, what do I have to um, provision, provide? Technology-wise, I need to support various protocols. Um, what is interesting with a NAS device is that I can very easily use it as a backup target at the same time. So especially for smaller customers, it's quite interesting to have one NAS device and you have one volume that you use for file sharing to provision data in a as a, as a network drive, and then you can have another volume that you use as a backup target for your backup software where you backup your PCs and your servers uh, to the NAS. Remote access, of course, is a topic in collaboration, something we will talk about later, shadow IT. And then, of course, what is important uh, is that you have full integration in your, in your uh, given rights and user management. Uh, when NAS appeared on, on the market um, and the first first people used it for, for file serving, there were some myths uh, around or back then potentially even um, real, real, let's say, counter arguments against using NAS for file serving. Uh, most of them you, you see here. And uh, I try to put them a little bit into perspective on, on the next slide. 
when it comes to those objections. So NAS is not suitable for Active Directory integration. That's really an old, an old one because any NAS vendor today gives you full Active Directory integration and the local user management uh, you need. On the performance side, we will later have a very quick look at uh, our hardware offering. Uh, there is more than enough from any NAS vendor, not only Netgear, uh, when it comes to the processing power, when it comes to um, the, the network bandwidth, uh, you have 10 gigabit connected devices available if, if, they, uh, if, if you need, so you can support multiple, multiple hundreds of users doing file sharing on a NAS device today. Um, file sharing only works properly with Windows Server software. This is actually an interesting one because you could also take the other uh, position and say, hey, NAS is in, in many aspects even better suited uh, to, you, to be used as a file server. Typically, a NAS has an optimized graphical user interface for file serving. You have uh, in a NAS techniques that, especially in the power saving side, are much easier to set up. They are integrated already, pre-configured, like Wake on LAN, Disk Spin Down, Standby, which, which helps you drive your uh, operational expenses down. NAS typically is more affordable. You also don't need to buy a license. Uh, that's an, an, a, a massively relevant point for many people. So on the CapEx side, capital expenditure, it's uh, also something that is to be considered. And then, which is very often relevant for small, medium business customers, NAS is very often very simple to use. We know, all know that there is more and more blend also in the, in the consumer uh, side of the house. So this is uh, the reason why all vendors, including ourselves, put a lot of effort in making the, the user interface as usable, as simple, as easy to use uh, as possible while maintaining, of course, the, the business aspects. Um, and then some time ago, there were solid arguments for the people for the server fraction, so to say, uh, when it comes to well, the maturity of a NAS on, on the file system level when it comes to data protection. And that has changed actually, but not with all the NAS vendors, but with, with all due respect, or if I dare or may dare, um, only with Netgear today, uh, we have by far more elements that make sure your data are really protected against various threats on the NAS in our NAS systems than any other has, vendor has out there. What's the main reason for that? Netgear is the only SMB NAS vendor that uses uh, so-called advanced file systems. ZFS, the setup byte file system um, that you may know is owned by Sun Oracle as an open source and also B3 file system, ButterFS or BTRFS as you can read here which is also owned by Sun Oracle. Both of them are so-called advanced copy and write file systems. And without going into too much details here, there are two key things that those advanced file systems offer that others cannot offer you. And that is number one, this protection against bit rot. How does this work? We don't have time today in this webinar to go into details here, but basically whenever we write uh, blocks onto the NAS, we take a, on the file system level, we take a um, checksum of that particular block of data. We put this checksum in the table and when the data are read again, we will compare the actual checksum to the checksum that was taken when the block was written. And if they match, we read the block. If the two don't match, there is a self-healing mechanism in the object-based rate of the NAS system that repairs the block and then makes sure that we always have uh, the same level of data integrity. So it's a huge advantage. It's probably not something that is very prominent in terms of great functionality, but it is just like an insurance policy uh, that gives you a massive leading edge or competitive edge compared to all <clears throat> other NASs in, in, in that level. If, if you talk about things like NetApp or EMC or IBM enterprise uh, storage systems, they've had that, of course, for year in, years in place, but it was not there um, on the SMB level. And the second thing that is enabled with uh, using advanced file systems, such as BTRFS or ZFS, is snapshot technology. Snapshots, basically, for those of you who are not familiar, was well, snapshot technology was invented by network appliance uh, one and a half decades ago. This was at the core what made their commercial success possible. You now have that on an SMB NAS, again, only from Netgear, um, the way it has to be done, which is basically you can 
take a snapshot of your file data, of your iSCSI lambs as well, by the way, um, every hour without impacting performance. The required storage capacity is only represented by the changed blocks in your data. So it's very, it's very slim. Uh, technology and the benefit is that whenever something happens, you delete the file, for example, you can restore data from previous points um, in time with just a few clicks. And then maximum you lose 59 minutes of your work if you wish as opposed to multiple hours. Um, one of the major advantages of a Windows file server, a Windows server based uh, file server in, in previous times. Here is a summary of what I just worked out on that on that objection slide. Again, those four layers, we actually always say five layers because you always have, uh, uh, of course, also protection against failure of a hard drive by having a RAID set up across, you write data across multiple disks, but that's not something that Netgear does uh, particularly different. This is mainstream technology. I think we are all aware about that. It's not the question if a hard drive fails, only when. So you have to have something in it that's RAID. <clears throat> and then I said, you have with our snapshot technology, when you use a NAS as a file server, you can be sure that you can restore data from hourly previous points. I will show that in a demo later. Um, we have the most easy to set up replication. So copying data, moving data, backing up data from one NAS to the other on a different site. Anti Real-time antivirus on the NAS, and then the protection against the bit rot. When we look at the collaboration aspect, which is uh, after the next slide going to be the next topic for, for today, uh, just to, state, to set the stage with uh, our ready NAS and ready data products, there are basically two ways or two levels of doing collaboration. One is what I call here collaboration for small with our own free, that's important, included ready cloud solution. Um, and there's an option for larger customers. Here we don't have our own product in place, but we have a very close cooperation with a company called Ignite. This is a hybrid cloud um, American company with, as we will later see, file or server farms in Europe now. So it's, uh, um, you, have, you have a lot of those privacy questions answered, um, which together with our hardware, provide a very interesting solution for large and largest customers out there. They scale up uh, into even into the enterprise space and they provide a nice option for uh, resellers to generate additional revenue, not only by selling the hardware, but also uh, subscription-based Ignite collaboration services. And then the third important point uh, I want to point out again, uh, are the cost and especially also the warranty advantages that you have when you use Netgear storage products. We are still the only NAS vendor out there that provides five years warranty across the entire uh, range of our business NAS products. And this five years warranty comes with a five years next business day uh, hardware replacement service. Here's a summary. I don't want to go into details on that slide. You will have it um, later for your records, just if you want to have the summaries, why or the answers to the question, why should I buy Netgear NAS as opposed to other NAS systems uh, out there for file serving, for virtual machines. Um, here you have the arguments combined in, in one uh, slide. So much on file serving. Um, I now want to go into the next topic here, collaboration. And again, a little question that I would like to ask the audience. Um, oops, this is unfortunately the wrong one because we had that already. Uh, so that was it then with the please don't answer. Uh, but we may be able To do this change this very quick. Yes, it's possible. So the question is, is Dropbox used for business considered a problem by you or by your customers? Uh, again, would be interesting to, to get answers from uh, the audience because you, you very often have also a situation where you say, hey, why not? It works. Uh, nobody's complaining about that. Just put everything uh, on. And um, I think let's leave it on for some time. 
to see where the counter goes. This is what I expected. There are certainly cases where uh, it's absolutely okay to use Dropbox, especially if we think about non-business critical uh, files. I, I would not hesitate to use Dropbox for sharing a, well, marketing PowerPoint slides, but it's certainly a different story when you um, want to share data like blueprints or plans or anything else that is protected intellectual property uh, <clears throat> if you want to, to share that via, via Dropbox. And we will later see a, a little table where we also see other uh, arguments against Dropbox actually. And one is of course the limited capacity and, um, and also once you want to use it really integrated in your business, the, the associated uh, subscription cost. Okay, thanks for answering. Um, collaboration one, as I called it, ready cloud. Uh, what do we actually do? Uh, there is from a well, topology perspective, functionality perspective, you have data on your NAS that you can synchronize uh, with other uh, computing devices, mainly PCs. There's also a mobile app uh, for iOS and, and Android. So you can actually have data on the NAS and you synchronize them on PCs, on other devices. You can also use it for file backup on a very small scale. And then of course the interesting one is that you can use it just for file sharing across users and groups, but important across uh, geographical uh, boundaries. And then of course another very important functionality, uh, you can also provision um, shares of course to external groups. So uh, suppliers, uh, agencies, whoever you want to work together as a customer. And then of course you can also share files um, with via, via an email link. Um, what is the use case for collaboration with Ready Cloud? I'm not going to go too much into details here, but just basically what I, what I, what I said. Um, and then there is a restriction to actually with Ready Cloud. The first one is we don't uh, offer yet uh, a locking and unlocking mechanism that basically means when you work on, on a, multiple people work on a file, you have to have some means of communication where you say, hey, I'm changing something here. Uh, please don't interfere because the one who <clears throat> closes the file, the last will, will always win. And we have no active directory integration, of course, of our analysis, but not that ready cloud instance. And then the second use case is, of course, uh, many of our customers set up the NAS as a business Dropbox. They really have a, a small ready NAS and they use this uh, for the same usage as they previously used Dropbox for, but they have no capacity limitation, no subscription cost, no public cloud because they own the hardware. Uh, they have the same functionality as with Dropbox, but with full control of, of your IT. And here's a little uh, comparison table. Um, in addition to all, let's say, the, the, the political or the privacy questions that you, of course, have, there is also a solid uh, cost advantage uh, slash capacity and usability advantage if you use a ready cloud service as, a, as opposed to Dropbox. Collaboration two, as I called it, um, Netgear and Ignite. Who's Ignite? Ignite is a very dynamically growing, uh, but a few year old company already. So they are quite established in the market. We can, we can well, safely not, but we can definitely assume that they will be around for quite some time um, <clears throat> and, and become one of, the, one of the leading hybrid cloud offerings uh, and vendors in the market, actually. Uh, everyone, please feel free to, to check that out yourselves. How does it basically work? It's a, work, it's a combination of, uh, the Ignite public cloud or Ignite owned uh, cloud instances and local storage. So if you think about an environment with five offices, uh, your customer, you would have a ready NAS or ready data hardware in any of those offices. With the big advantage that you have local area network speed and also safety and security, of course. So people would work on their files just on the NAS itself, map network drive. But at the same time, uh, you would do collaboration via the uh, hybrid cloud uh, entity of uh, Ignite. So basically, all the files that you want to collaborate on, they are being synchronized via the cloud to other office locations. and on that other office location, people, again, they work on local uh, area network speed. They change the file. There is locking mechanisms and all, and, and all that versioning. 
uh, notification of, of, of others who, who collaborate on the same file. So there's a lot of, a lot of um, functionalities in there. Uh, please feel free to browse the Ignite website with a thorough explanation of, um, of all the functionalities. Important is that they are now on European server farms. Here you see the, 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 um, the address, ignite.com slash netgear. Um, and then just to give you an idea also where we are cost-wise with the smallest hybrid cloud um, offering called Office. Um, the subscription cost is uh, somewhere in the $8 per employee range. And then we have, I think for the business one, it's unfortunately not really visible, it's $15 per user per month and an enterprise is uh, on demand. You will find all that information um, on the internet, of course. What is the beauty for resellers? Last bullet point here, uh, here you earn a percentage of the monthly subscription cost when you sell an Ignite contract. The way it works is you would purchase and just as usual uh, deploy the Netgear hardware from us via the typical distribute distribution channels and then you would uh, enter an additional uh, contractual relationship with uh, Ignite and you would resell monthly subscriptions to your customers and of that revenue you can keep a uh, share. I think it's somewhere in the 30% uh, range of the monthly subscription fee. So a very interesting business model also for, uh, for uh, our, our resellers here. All right, so this was uh, it on the theoretical bit. Now I really want to show um, a few glimpses of, of uh, the functionality that I've uh, explained to you so far. I'm sharing my screen and I hope everybody can, my, can see my screen now. Um, the interesting bit is now how, how, how to actually start uh, the whole thing. Maybe we start with, with Ready Cloud. Um, there are various ways of accessing uh, the data or I can maybe start with the, with the benefit. What you see in front of you is my um, Windows Explorer and I want to draw your attention to the left bottom area here where you see all the map network drives that I have uh, in the office environment. Uh, I'm at the moment at the Netgear office in Munich, but I very often work uh, remotely from home and also when I'm traveling uh, from, from various locations. And the first thing I want to show you with Ready Cloud is how you actually can more or less uh, create a, a virtual private network environment without VPN. This is the important bit when we talk about um, Ready Cloud. Uh, across multiple locations. And what you see here is basically we have an office share, a department share, a corporate share. Those are shares, map network drives that are provisioned by our, our um, IT department. Uh, we have Netgear storage devices for this. I want to show you a particular one that we've, me and my systems engineer colleagues set up ourselves. This is the office share, the one that is highlighted right Here is that uh, a few guys who sit in the Munich office, they have uh, shared uh, spaces on that uh, ready now systems system. And then there is more to it. You can see a share that has a funny IP address, the 5.183133, whatever, folder called documents. This is actually a share that sits on a ready NAS 150 kilometers away from my current location. It is a ready NAS in my home office. And as you can see, I can access the data as if I were um, in my local area network at home, actually, or in the home office. Of course, you have uh, the internet in between, so there, there, you, you have some bandwidth limitations. But um, that's what you can do. There's another one which I want to use called Netgear. Also, this one is physically now 150 kilometers away from me. And as you can see, I can, uh, for example, access photos from an event we went to recently. It takes a little while. As I said, this is internet connection, of course, but here you can clearly see um, those, those photographs. Um, 
And then what you see here is basically also a synchronization message that something has been synchronized. I will show you that, that later. And then you see another share here, which is red with, a, with an X, so obviously it's not accessible. This is actually the local instance of that document share with the funny 5.183 IP address. So when I'm in my home office in Regensburg, which is the city 150 kilometers away, I would access the very same ordner, uh, folder via the, uh, the documents uh, share uh, link that you see here that is called user home. Now. So it's exactly the same, just this is the local, the local share. I can do that from anywhere. I have an internet connection. And I said the important point is I don't need a VPN solution because this is actually the main difference to many other vendors here in the way we, we do it technologically. As you can see here on the right-hand side, I just opened the Ready Cloud app, which is uh, installed on my PC. It's just a, a quick download. You can see we are connected via a VPN, but this is our own Netgear um, private VPN. This is the main difference. All the other NAS vendors out there, if they offer their, their cloud exchange stations and functionalities, you always have to expose your NAS to the internet. You need to activate port forwarding on your router. First of all, this is additional configuration effort. And second, it's a massive security risk. With Ready Cloud on, on Ready NAS, you don't have to do that. You just connect to the internet and with your username and password, uh, which you enter in that little app, you have a secure VPN tunnel from your PC into the NAS uh, from a remote location. You can also see I'm now connected to one NAS in my home via VPN, and the, the second one is connected locally. Uh, that's the Team MUC RN3112, or as a net, uh, map, uh, uh, map network drive, it's that office share over here, the 1051.166. Okay, so this is this is one way of uh, of um, accessing the data. Uh, then, what you can also do from this uh, Netgear Ready Cloud um, app, you can see all the shares that are on those NASs that are part of the, of the, uh, of the Ready Cloud uh, entity that you have. This is my, my private or semi-private NAS at home. You can see it's connected. Those are all the shares uh, that are on this particular uh, NAS. I haven't mapped all of them because there are some private ones. But as you can see, this one, the document is this document and this document share uh, mapped to the PC. Now, there are two shares that you can see that have a, a green a uh, tick box next to, next to them. I could also, this means that this share is actually synchronized via the Ready Cloud app with my PC. So what we see over here on the left side, this is basically accessing the share from my PC, but there is no synchronization. I would just access the data from remote. The synchronized folders, if I do this, I could also do this with my music folder, for example. If I click sync with PC, then I establish synchronization from the NAS at home onto my PC. And if I do this, um, I can, I automatically create folders of those shared, uh, shared shares, shared folders on my PC. So when I click sync folder on the, uh, here on, 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 on my Ready Cloud application, this will automatically create a share on my PC. And we have two here, the Netgear and Sync demo. And there is another one from the Office share. But let's just have a look at the Netgear one. So this is now local. And it has synchronized all the content uh, from the Netgear share on my home NAS to my PC. So anything I change here is automatically changed uh, on my Netgear share um, at home. I hope you're still with me in terms of the various accesses because now we will see even more options. Because if I am a user who does not want to um, have the Ready Cloud app on their PC or I'm on a different PC, I can always access um, 
the data that are on that ready cloud instance uh, we are the web access portal readycloud.netgear.com uh, what you just, just saw before, by the way, uh, this is also when you have a new NAS or even our uh, latest router generation, you can also set up your device from there uh, and then um, have all the ready cloud functionality um, just set up. So what I do is I log in with my user credentials, which I've generated um, when I when I brought uh, the NAS uh, up and running first time when I bought it. I can always do this, uh, this at, a, at a later stage, of course. And now I enter the Ready Cloud Access Portal. This is actually, again, just to make that clear, this is an, uh, um, a variant of accessing data that is completely independent from any PC, from any PC app. I don't need this, this little Ready Cloud app. I can do everything you see in, in the next few minutes from any PC, from any browser uh, in the world. And here again, we have my NAS system. And here I can also download my, my uh, Ready Cloud app just for those uh, of you who have the question, where do I get the software from? And there is another one, another NAS, which is the Team Unic RN312. And here, I don't see all the shares. I only see one share, one office share, because as you can see from this little, this little symbol with the two hands, uh, this is actually a NAS system that somebody else has to administer rights to it, <clears throat> not me, but that person gave me um, access to one share. Uh, there's first, there's two, one home folder, but there is also an office share that he gave me access to um, so that I can upload, download files there, share files, um, and synchronize the data with my uh, PC, of course. So this is something you can do um, when you are the customer. You want, for example, provide a shared folder to your PR agency because they want to exchange data with you as, as, as their customer. You would then just right click on that folder, you go on share, <clears throat> and it takes a little while here. But what you can basically do, you can invite uh, others by providing an email address to that particular share on Ready Cloud, and they then can uh, access the, the share. They can map it, they can um, synchronize it, and they can access it from the web uh, portal. Takes a little while here now. Uh, but you can see there's a few people already that have access to some of my shares. I can set the user rights here, and then I would just add an email, and that person would get an invitation to create the username and password and have access to this one uh, share that I that I allow access to. Uh, let's go into the Netgear share. So you can hopefully see that... Um, Maybe go into the photos SC. This makes it more obvious. Open the next folder. So this is now exactly the same share with those photos um, that we've also opened on the PC instance. But on the PC, it's a synchronized folder. It's physically on my uh, laptop hard drive. And at the same time, the same data are um, on my uh, NAS in, in, in Regensburg in the, in the home office. Okay, and what I could do here, uh, that's the function that I want to show. If I want to send this uh, image to somebody, or I can also select multiple uh, fi uh, files, by the way. I want to email this to somebody as, an e as, a, as a link. I would just put in my email uh, address the recipient address, I can create the password or not, uh, which I have to send separately. I can limit the number of downloads of that particular uh, email link, or I can set the date um, when the downloadability of that file actually uh, expires. Okay, then going um, up one level, and have a look at uh, the, day, the, the files again. So here again, you can see it's exactly the same, um, the same 
set of data. Let's create a new um, text document, for example, test demo. Uh, today is the 23rd of June. And it should not take too long to have um, the data updated or files up to date, it already says. Often you get a little uh, notification that uh, the data have been updated. And theoretically, here is our test demo June 23rd. So I created it locally on the hard drive on my laptop and it has been automatically created um, in, my, in my ready cloud instance. The next thing I can do um, from my ready cloud um, app, and that's particularly useful for resellers who want to offer also the remote maintenance as a service. Uh, I can from here just go on the admin page of the NAS system directly because it's that proprietary VPN connection. You can do that for customers also that don't have a VPN. Uh, connectivity and where you don't want to, you know, uh, get on TeamViewer and, and all those things. You just very simply click on that. You have a direct access to the full management uh, GUI on the NAS itself. This is now again the NAS system uh, at home. Here we can go into the shares. Uh, you will hopefully uh, see the Netgear share again with all the data that we saw previously. Uh, and now we can do something which leads us to one other thing I want to show, which is the snapshot protection. Let's delete that test demo text file we just created. Yes, I'm sure I want to delete it. And this is now the situation where I, uh, you can also see there's the notification from the synchronization uh, functionality that the file has been deleted. We can actually have a look into um, the local instance of this share and you will see the, that file has, has, has gone. Um, let's do something else because I just forgot that I can't recreate uh, or restore a snapshot from a file that I just created two minutes ago. We need to delete something else. Um, for example, where is the image? Yeah, this one. Let's delete the image. This time we delete it on our local instance. Let's do a refresh. It has happened already. So you see that uh, JPEG has gone. So this is now the situation where somebody deletes a file accidentally. I want to recover the file. And here I see all the snapshots uh, that have been done on that particular NAS device, as my device at home is uh, set for uh, disk spin down. Those are not really hourly snapshots. Hourly snapshots happen only when the device is, device is running, which was the case since whatever, 9 or 9.30 this morning. So I have a snapshot from 10 and one from 11. Let's go into that uh, snapshot from 11 o'clock in the restore files. And here is my image, the one that I just deleted. Let's say this is the PowerPoint that your colleague has been working on for 24 hours. You just click on recover and then you have the notification. The selected file is being restored now. Close it and here is my picture again. And it's also has been recreated, of course, in my synchronization folder. File restore from snapshot has completed. And this is actually a technology that until we came up with, with our ReadyNAS um, systems was only available from companies not like uh, like Net, uh, NetApp <clears throat> or really enterprise um, storage firms. Or of course also on the Windows server, but now we want to have this capability on a typical uh, NAS system. Good, uh, so much on the demo. I hope it was um, helpful to yeah, see some of the functionalities here. The most important one for me, honestly, is the data protection bit. Um, in addition, of course, to the synchronization and all that for, for smaller environments. But the antivirus, the data protection with, with snapshots and the restore options from hourly previous versions 
um, I think is the is is the most beneficial one for uh, any business use cases. Uh, maybe I to to make that a bit more clear. I share the uh, the Munich office one actually uh, the NAS and we go on shares and on this is the German version. But what you will see here is really the um, the hourly snapshots. And this is, we set it per default. So here you clearly see every hour we took a snapshot of that particular office share. So anybody deletes something or, or screws something up on that particular office share, with just a few clicks, as you saw, we can restore any uh, file you want from uh, any any of of those folders. Uh, there is nothing in that folder, but just I think the the, the, the concept is, is pretty clear. You can also um, approach those snapshots from the timeline, which then um, gives you again snapshots uh, that you can restore from here with just a, a, a click, but then you roll back the entire uh, you roll back the entire share, and you can't restore a single, a single, uh, uh, just a single file from here. This is particularly interesting when we talk about virtual machine images. So here you see your hourly snapshots. You can roll back every single one of them. Uh, you can also clone them, so you can create a read and writable, writable um, clone of that particular snapshot. Very helpful when it comes to testing uh, database applications and things like that. Um, and then what you can also see is that we delete snapshots as they get older automatically because you don't want to end up with a whole with thousands of snapshots necessarily. And we say uh, that uh, we delete every, the, the hourly snapshots after um, 48 hours, the daily snapshots after two weeks, the weekly ones after a month, and the monthly ones we keep forever so that you always have an instance of, of your, um, your initial or, or your primary data. All right. Um, ah, there's a very good question uh, uh, coming here. Um, the question is, if ReadyNAS comes with a su subscription fee or is it an app that comes free of charge with the product? Everything you saw uh, for ReadyNAS is part of the solution. There is no additional license you can buy for, for a Netgear ReadyNAS except uh, video surveillance. So all the functionality is part of the offering. Um, this is also why um, we have some limitations and we are not ashamed of those because if you need really this enterprise functionality with locking with full Active Directory integration of the cloud instance, again, just to be very precise, the NAS itself as a file server can be fully integrated uh, in Active Directory just that the ready cloud instance um, is um, not. There's another question, antivirus on the ReadyNAS. Um, it's activated uh, via the GUI. In the background, we use the uh, signatures from ComTouch. If you want to look it up, uh, feel free to do so, please. Uh, it's a very well-established antivirus um, organization. And there's two levels. The first one is the, the well, basic antivirus protection we have. It's the, the mo key differentiator also is it's real time. Very important, we scan as we write. So basically, whenever malware makes it onto the NAS, we catch it immediately as opposed to a scan every 24 hours uh, where, where you potentially, well, something can ha harm your system for 23 hours, 59 minutes. Um, second, it is for free and third, there is an app that you can download where you can further fine tune and, um, and, and adapt and adjust your antivirus uh, capabilities. And also that's for free uh, as well. There's uh, a colleague or a, a reseller named Map Musa is uh, raising his hand. Uh, unfortunately, this does not work properly. If you could just type your questions in, um, in the chat window, I can uh, then answer it. Um, okay, there is a question about backing up the data. 
from the NAS, I understand that um, you are looking to see how the data is backed up from the NAS to a additional backup target. I will uh, show this in a second. Uh, this is the tab. Uh, it's called backup. You can then create a new backup, or maybe we take the English one. Um, you can add a backup. Um, this is always funny. The, my last backup failed. There's a very simple reason. My daughter is always disconnecting the attached USB drive. Um, so if you want to create a, a backup, you would say add backup here. And then you have all sorts of options. Uh, you can, first of all, identify which of your, your shares uh, you want to backup. And then you can um, identify if you want to so, um, back up them remotely via FTP, NFS, rsync server. So we also support all the, the generic protocols, so to say. Um, and you can also, of course, uh, back up the data locally to your eSATA or USB ports on the NAS. And then once you've selected that, you can select the schedule um, and, and, and all that. And then there's the other option that you have that is ready now to replicate, as you can see it here. And there's also an option, by the way, to, to back up to the cloud. Uh, we have two options at the moment. Uh, we are looking at um, expanding them. One is ready now's vault. That's a, uh, an additional um, subscription-based service. In the background is Amazon S3. Ready now's vault is a third-party vendor uh, that we work with. And you can also back up into a Dropbox. We have full time machine integration um, of Mac computers. That's also here. And then uh, again, you can add a backup. You can set the scheduler, or you can also program the backup button, which is in front of some of the NASes, the desktop uh, class NASes. So some people still like that. They like to leave the office and push the button, and then the backup runs, uh, even though this is not really necessary if you have a, a scheduler there, but, but uh, a lot of people like that. What I also want to show you quickly, I think we still have time, is, and this is a recorded video now, how you can back up one NAS to another NAS via the internet over replication. There is one way of doing it, uh, that's the, the rsync service, that's the generic protocol. I think I showed that. Uh, already yes here um, which is a typical yeah a uh, little bit more configuration effort to set up an rsync uh, replication to a distant server it's doable it's not rocket science but we found a way that makes that whole thing much easier and i just want to walk you quickly through this this is our uh, ready nas and ready data replicate basically you activate replicate in the current gui it's done elsewhere. I showed, they showed that in the, in the cloud tab, but the functionality is the same. You register any NAS that is part of the replication environment with your ready cloud user ID and password in the internet. So you say, hey, I want this NAS to replicate. And you also need to uh, register your target uh, NAS, of course. So all the NASs that should be replicated from or to, you need to register at our replicate service. And then you go to the replicate.readynos.com web portal. This is what you see in front of you right now. Again, you log in with your um, <clears throat> user ID and password. And then the beauty of this web interface is that you see all the devices that are part of your replication environment. In this case, too, it can be multiple devices, of course. And you would just select your source device. You can. Uh, select your folders, you can either replicate the entire volume or just, in this case, the picture folder, and then you select your target device, so the device that you want to replicate to over the internet. And <clears throat> you uh, have a backup folder there, for example. You click Next. You can then set the pattern, how often you want the replication uh, to happen. You click on Apply. And that's actually it. So because we have that VPN technology in the background that we also use for this functionality, uh, we can make it so much easier to, to set up and configure a real business class uh, disaster recovery solution because this is, in essence, what it is. 
uh, than, than uh, most of our competitors can. I hope that has answered the question. There's a number of additional questions coming in. Uh, before I answer that, I would just like to finish two or three more slides and then um, go into answering the questions. So just a very quick glimpse on how is this reflected in hardware. We have uh, two, at Netgear, two product families, Ready NAS, which is the biggest chunk here, and Ready Data. Ready Recover, by the way, for those of you who have medium-sized customers with Windows servers and PCs, this is a very, very interesting backup appliance solution, uh, but not topic for today. Uh, Ready Data is, when it comes to capacity, scalable up to 360 terabyte and uh, has higher performance even. And the other key differentiator is that with Ready Data, the replication is block-based. So that basically means that you can do full replication also with very large uh, backup files or um, virtual machine images. Um, back to Ready NAS, just a quick explanation. We have, you see the serial numbers, 100, 200, 300, 500, 600, 700. Um, on the desktop systems and 2120, 3130, 3242. This is basically the number of concurrent users is defined by the serial number. Long story short, this is processing power. And then the last cipher is the number of hard drives, two, four, six that you can put in a, in a, in a system. You will have all the details um, when, when you receive the follow-up. Um, of this webinar, so I don't want to spend time uh, on on uh, on this really for for the webinar. Uh, also, I want to point out how we look at warranty and support. Here you see the oh, this is a German slide. Apologies for that. I will exchange that. But long story short, is five years hardware warranty for anything uh, 300 series and above. So anything left of of, uh, of this line basically comes with three years, a uh, right of this line basically comes with five years warranty and next business day hardware support. And then uh, there's two more slides with a lot of tools. All those are links uh, to various very usable uh, tools that help you configure, sell, and, and um, put together Netgear storage. Two slides on that one. Okay, so um, now I want to go back to the questions. Um, if the ReadyNAS fails, can you simply transfer the working drives to another ReadyNAS box? Yes, you can if you keep the order and if you have the same firmware um, release on the, the empty ReadyNAS box, then it's not a problem. Uh, are there any restrictions to what USB device is used? Uh, Mac Windows, not that I'm aware about. If you have a very specific questions, I would uh, suggest you contact one of your systems engineers before you uh, make an actual purchase. Um, are there any USBs for ReadyNAS Vault compared to Dropbox? Um, not that I'm aware about. What you should do is very clearly uh, figure out how much data you want to want to back up into the cloud, and then uh, depending on the subscription cost, this will determine which is probably commercially the better the better solutions. Do we have a pre preparation for uh, any of the two? No. Um, it would be great if there would be a direct route to Amazon S3. Any plans for that? Uh, yes. We do look into this very carefully, but we don't have a timeline um, for this functionality yet. Good, we are at the hour. If there is more questions, uh, so anyone who wanted to have exactly that one hour, please feel free to uh, drop off, of course. Uh, I will keep the line open for some time because there is obviously still some, some questions coming in, which I'm happy to, um, To answer, can the ready data run the two 10 gigabit Ethernet ports in a lag? No, not as far as I know, and 
I'm not sure if there's a use case actually for this where you really need the two times 10 gigabit Ethernet ports combined to have 20 gigabit Ethernet uh, while at the same time um, sacrificing the level of redundancy that, that that gives you. I would not do this. And uh, in the use cases, we know that 10 gigabit Ethernet is more than enough. Can we use other hardware with the Netgear Cloud? Uh, yes and no. You can't use, uh, of course, the, the uh, other hardware as the hardware storage for Ready Cloud, but you can, of course, access Ready Cloud services from any PC, any Mac, any anything that has a browser. If we upgrade from a ReadyNAS to a newer, larger one, can we connect to same Ready Cloud? Uh, yes, you can, because you just have to register the new NAS to, to the very same uh, Ready Cloud account and uh, the master account, and then you can you can actually have exactly the same uh, services. Um, any info for us on NFR units? I would transfer this question please to your local Netgear um, account manager and they for sure can uh, give you more information on that. 4K video editing, um, I'm not sure I can really answer this question. Uh, it should definitely be possible on our 500 series and above, and there's a new kit on the block in the 200 series range that can help you with that or can support this. But uh, please stay put for um, additional uh, news coming your way probably within the next few weeks. Now, thanks for the positive feedback, by the way. Uh, I, I get here, this is, this is highly appreciated. Good. Um, with that said, uh, thanks again for your time, for your interest. I hope it was, it was, um, I was able to potentially uh, yeah, create one or the other additional idea you have, how you can serve your customers, what solutions you can suggest to them, uh, and um, hope to see and uh, see you and talk to you very soon in one of the upcoming Netgear webinars. Thank you very much and have a great day.